guys and welcome back to my channel reading warrior in case you couldn't tell i am back home again that's why the background is different and the lighting is really bad there are no good places to film in my house so this is kind of the best we're gonna get with a books background type thing so i am back home for the break um so this video is going to be a little bit about a wrap up of this year but also explaining what i'm going to do next year because next year I have big plans and big ideas that are going to be interesting and it is going to be a year-long process so let's just get right into it I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do too much of a wrap-up for this uh, year because this video was mostly supposed to be about next coming year also uh, because I started booktube a few months ago so I, I don't really have a lot to reflect on I only did Goodreads for the second half of the year you know it just wasn't quite a complete year because I didn't read a lot at the beginning um, because of school and work and just kind of getting into it you know I, I did reading very leisurely I kind of took my time I didn't really do audiobooks at all um, just because music was a thing and then I kind of forgot about audiobooks for a while I guess and then when I came back home and my parents were like oh we're listening to these audiobooks and I was like that's a good point I should get into audiobooks and my point my point is is that I didn't do a lot at the beginning of the year not as much as I wanted to um, so my end of the year wrap up is gonna be very short um, and some of my books I left at college that I'm gonna talk about so like I'm not gonna have them here with me bummer um, but yeah, so my best book of the year was probably Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I finished it. I actually rated it five stars on Goodreads. I'm still debating if I want to keep it at five stars or if I want to put it down to four. Because if you are new here and you don't know me, hi, welcome. Um, but also, I just don't like rating books five stars because I feel like five stars is like a perfect rating and nothing is really perfect. Like there's always something for someone to improve on. Like I even hold this to myself and everything I do is like, it may have been great, it may have been amazing and wonderful, but you can always do better. Um, and so I feel like I don't give out five stars a lot because there's always room to improve. But currently, right now, Scythe is at a five star because I loved the characters, the development, the emotions that they feel. I love the world building and the descriptions of everything. They describe enough without describing too much and I just felt like it was a really good balance. Um, so I finished Scythe and I'm actually currently reading Thunderhead, which is the second book in the trilogy and I'm really excited to continue reading that and I know as soon as I finish it I'll read the toll even though I'm not very far into it I just know that I have to finish the trilogy at this point um so that would probably be the highest book of my year and it's also one that I just recently read um and then some of the low books I don't think I rated anything below two stars this year um just because everything was at least good enough for two stars um so some of them included there was one children's book i read it was like the by valentine thing my roommate made me read it it took me five minutes to read it not even because i made fun of it most of the time it just it made no sense there were things that even like for a children's book i was like really really okay like just the even the plot the characters i know i it's a children's book but whatever um but honestly what took up most of my reading time was a series of unfortunate events i am going to finish the 12th book today and i hope to start the last book the end today or tomorrow and read it before the new year is upon us so that i can really get started on that historical fiction from day one um so that took a lot of my time those kind of juggled between three and four stars a lot so they were all my mediocre reads as well as like just my majority time reads um just because some books are better than others um sometimes like i like some of the characters in this book but then in that book they weren't so great or whatever so honestly that encaptures most of my reading this year series of unfortunate events and just the random book here or there just as i am figuring out how to do college and reading and I'm also a part of a book club at my university so a lot of what I read to is for the book club so it's things I don't necessarily choose for myself um so we did an absolutely remarkable thing um 
which I enjoyed, and that is a little more contemporary, but also kind of science fiction-y, and, like, that one was all right. Um, over the break, we are reading two books, and so I will have to finish those. One of them is Sharp Objects, and I am almost done with that one. I'm also going to finish that one today because I'm listening to it as an audiobook rather than, like, actually reading it, so... And I listen to my audiobooks at 1.8 speed, so I'm almost reading them or listening to them in half the time it takes normally, um, and I am enjoying that one, although that book affected my dreams last night, and it did not make me very happy about that. <laughs> but, oh well. So, that's honestly going to be the end of my wrap-up. Hi, Scythe, low, kind of children's books, and, like, majority of it for me was just catching up on a childhood series that I should have read as a kid and didn't. Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. Which honestly just warms my heart. It's great. Okay, so my big plans for next year is going to be reading different genres per month because I read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi, but I know there are other genres of books that I enjoy a lot and that I read on occasion, but not as much as I want to or I should. I just always get distracted by like the new fantasy books coming out and the new sci-fi books coming out. Like I pay more attention to those and then I end up reading those more even though I know that I love other genres or I even don't love other genres and I either need to give them another chance or maybe my opinions have changed. I don't know. So that's why this coming year I am challenging myself to read one genre per month of a genre I don't read a lot or at all. So I'm going to quick tell you the genres per month that I've chosen and then every month at the end I'm going to do a video about the books I read and my opinions, if anything's changed and it, stuff like that, etc. and so forth. Um, so this video is coming out before the new year so that right on January 1 I can get started with my chosen genre for January, which is historical fiction. Haha! <laughs> I do love historical fiction. I know that already. I just don't read it near as much as I want to. I don't know why, but that is kind of the case. So I'm going to start off the year with some historical fiction because I'm not ready for it to be 2020. So we're going back a couple of hundred years and reading some historical fiction. February is going to be romance, obviously inspired by Valentine's Day. I have a thing with romance. I don't like reading it but I also feel like I haven't read enough of it to really fairly assess the entire genre as a whole. So I am going to choose a couple of books that try to represent the genre in a positive light to try and get me to like it again. For March, I'll be reading Contemporary, which is a genre I don't have an opinion about because I haven't really ever read it at all. I have a couple contemporary books that I could read, I just honestly haven't gotten there. And like, a goal too with this is I have books of all different genres on my shelf that I have not read so at the same time I'm gonna try and choose books that I already own that I haven't read that fit these genres like I probably haven't read them because they're not a fantasy or sci-fi genre which is bad on me because I keep buying more books so we're just gonna try and feed two birds with one scone in that way. Moving on to April are going to be graphic novels. I chose graphic novels because those will be a quicker read and April is going to be around the time when exams are going to be picking up for me so hopefully like I can read quickly at the beginning of the month so that I can also have time to prepare for exams at the end of the month because I'm going to have a very busy semester next semester so graphic novels something I don't think I've ever read ever before so we're gonna give this a shot. Moving on to May, I am going to do sci-fi for May. I did say I read a lot of it already, but there are just so many books on my shelf that are science fiction that I need to get read. So, so we're going to go with those um, and just try and get them done. Plus, I read more fantasy than sci-fi. Okay, for June, I also have fantasy. Again, I just have so many books on my bookshelf that I need to get read. Um, plus, I read a lot of popular fantasy, but I feel like there are a lot of fantasy books that come out that aren't always popular, and so I'm going to try and dive into some of those during the summer when I have a lot more time to read. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, moving on to July will be classics, because I read a lot of classics in middle school, um, and I do really enjoy them, but there are just so many that I also haven't read that I feel like I need to catch up with them. Uh, so that will be July. July will be classics. August will be adventure books, which a lot of adventure books can 
slide into another genre, I feel like. So, like, an adventure fantasy or an adventure sci-fi, but I'm going to try and stick purely to adventure books. Because even with the fantasy and sci-fi that I already read, they're not very adventure-focused anymore. So I'm just going to try and go for good, classic, like, traditional adventure books during this time. September is going to be poetry. I have a couple poetry books. I really don't read poetry. I kind of don't want to, but that's the whole point of this. Reading things I don't always want to just to give them a second chance. So September will be t poetry, right as school is starting again, so it's another hopefully shorter thing for me to read as school is getting kicked into gear. Um, October is going to be horror, obviously, because Halloween is in October and I need to prepare and I just don't read horror. Cause I, I don't know, for me, like I'll watch horror movies, I love horror movies, but horror books, I just don't, I don't understand how I can be scared of a book because I can just close it or I can just, it's easier to disassociate myself with the story with a book than with a movie. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I, I hope I'll like them. Uh, November is also going to be mystery because I wanted to read more mystery. I, for the thing with me and mystery, me and mystery, <laughs> is that I always find the duds. Or like I feel like history is very hit or miss and I always find the miss books somehow and they're very easy to predict and they're just not all that interesting. But um, we'll see. Hopefully I can find some recommendations from people to give me some good history or mystery books that I will not see coming the end of it. Sentences, words, English. I'm good at that. It's my uh, and then I will be ending the year, wow, ending 2020 in December with retellings and fairy tales um, because I've recently started reading those a little bit more with all of my twisted tales. I've been reading recently and I thoroughly enjoy them and I know that there are other twisted tales and retellings that might even be better than those so I am very intrigued and also just fairy tales and even maybe throw in a mythology book or something in there I don't quite know I don't have the books picked out yet for the entire year I think just at the beginning of the month I'm gonna go to the library I'm gonna get recommendations from people and just kind of see what's there see what grabs me and I'm gonna try and read like two or three books each month that will capture the genre that will be very different from different authors and things like that so I can get a true understanding of each genre within this month. So that's the goal for this coming year. Woohoo! So I'm really excited to get started with this historical fiction. I'm starting on a high note. Um, I have a couple historical fiction books that I own that I've been meaning to read and then um, my roommate reads a bit of historical fiction so I will be asking her for recommendations when I go back to school. Yeah, so that is my plan for this coming year. We'll see you guys in the new year. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. If you celebrate, if you celebrate another holiday, then I hope you had a wonderful holiday. If you don't celebrate any holidays at this time of year and you just had time off from work or school, whatever, I hope you enjoyed your time. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful new year. Um, if you like this video, please um, comment down below or give it a thumbs up, letting me know that you liked it. If you are excited to see like what uh, books I'll read in this coming year and what I think of different genres, and maybe you can even do like a read along with me and choose books for each of the genres that I listed. Um, again, let me know in the comments because I'm very interested, but also subscribe so you can keep track of that whole journey that I'm doing if you want to journey it with me or if like you're like oh I read a lot of that genre you should read this or just whatever like subscribe if you're interested like it if you liked it comment below with liter literally anything I would love to hear from you guys uh, so yeah happy new year and happy reading